Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I think I want to get uh, one of these claws over to an asteroid. Uh, but there are many other things we could be doing. We could look into... and I'm grabbing a probe part here because I think I'm going to have this be a probe-based uh, mission, like I said in the previous episode. But uh, we could be building a space station, that's something I want to do. Okay, is it going to let me... It doesn't want to let me keep this off to the side here, let me dump it for now. Anyway, uh, so we could build a space station. I want to do that in this series because in the previous stock series I did, I didn't build a space station. I also didn't do any uh, unmanned missions, so this will be my first unmanned mission in stock K uh, KSP for quite a long time. Um, yep, let me just dump this and... Oh yes, I have to actually bring it like this. Uh, right. Okay, I think one is hidden or something, is it? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, lots of things... And of course we have to do more science. There's more science to be done. So, plenty of considerations. In fact, well, I guess we haven't unlocked graviolis yet. Favorite thing, of course. Oh, yeah, we could uh, put this mobile processing lab into orbit and start that sort of thing off. Okay, well, that's that's a thought. But let's let's get a, a claw over to that, that one asteroid that was supposed to intercept but decided not to. I'm really irritated with that one, so I want to I wanna claw it. Uh, hmm. I think these tanks would look better if we put them on the probe. Okay, well, we'll need to create some space for this. Uh, something along those lines. Uh, this, this one doesn't have to be there. How about a battery? Uh, bigger battery. Oop, oop. Oh, well, I sh we shouldn't have been on angles. Uh, on. Uh... I don't even know what the other snap is called. So angles. But yeah, this I always call this one angle snap. I don't know what I call the other one, but okay. So there's that. So we don't have the bigger batteries, unfortunately. Um. But on the bright side, we're not intending to bring this claw back down at all. So we don't really need to separate the service module stage. So we can do something like this. Four lights pointing in the same direction seems a bit... Well, we've got... Uh, we're probably going to have quite a lot of energy here. Um... Yeah, let's put these down here. Not six of them, though. And put some RCS, because, well, we've got plenty of RCS tanks. Okay. Got the huge reaction wheel there. I guess that'll be good enough. Okay. Now these, perhaps we should get some that are facing the other direction this time. Well, the spotlights we want in front. We've already got those in front. Actually, that's one thing we need to change. Instead of having four spotlights, let's get to two spotlights here, maybe unobstructed by the... yeah. Two spotlights and two more spotlights here. And then we'll take these two. Two. Flip them around. Oh, we can't attach anything to the claw, right? Yeah. And then we'll have both of them be like reversing each other. Yeah. Let's turn on the lights and see how that goes. 
that's on. I think that should go. That should be fine. Okay, so that would be a probe, but we could do with some communication ability. Can't really stick it on that part. Let's put this on though. Uh, Alright, so we can communicate, so maybe we should bring some science, but I don't think there's that much space. And we do want to keep this lean and mean so that we can actually get to the asteroid. I'm going to take these batteries off, maybe? Eh, you can't go wrong with batteries. Okay, I think that's our mission. Uh, we just want to rendezvous with an asteroid and maybe hopefully push it around a little bit. That's the sum total of the whole thing. And I don't think there's any other part we could possibly need for that purpose. Alright, so this will be 83. Let's save it. Make sure staging is okay. Staging is reasonably okay. And yep, yeah, let's take this out to the launch pad. Alright, here we go. Let's get the lights on. Uh, it's gonna be in the dark, but I think it'll be alright. So we've got our lights, and we've got a good rocket. Now remember, the asteroid we're targeting is in interplanetary space, so there's no point timing it or anything like that. Uh, trying to get the right phase angle will probably take uh, many, many uh, years to uh, get, and because the orbits of Kerbin and the asteroid are so close, and yeah, we're not gonna wait for that. So uh, everything is a go. Let's launch. Okay, boosters away. So uh, in yesterday they had the SpaceX launch. They finally got the resupply vessel off to off to the ISS, um, the Dragon capsule, but of course there were numerous other reasons why that was an important launch. First of all, uh, it looks like they, they uh, were successful in getting the first stage back. They, the first stage slowed its descent, we know that, and it landed in the Atlantic Ocean with its computers still running until it, uh, it until it flattened out. The computers were running when it was uh, vertical, but then when it went horizontal and splashed, of course, like we've seen so many rockets do in Kerbal Space Program, uh, that uh, that uh, then the computers went awry, I guess. But um, but yeah, it was able to slow its descent, which is the important thing, of course, uh, if you're not going to plunge into the depths of the ocean and actually be able to be retrieved, you should uh, slow your descent. Oh yeah, the other factor that I was trying to come up with the words for was um, the... it wasn't spinning. I mean, very important thing. Uh, the It was under control the first stage was. And of course, uh, it is an important fact that it touched down standing vertically because that's how they intend to have it touch down on land as well. Uh, they want to use those big lander legs to make sure it uh, touches down safely vertically. So, and it looks like it did, it did do that. So, yeah, SpaceX may have a retrievable first stage. And that should make them uh, way, way better than their competitors in terms of pricing. If they, if they really can retrieve that uh, first stage, uh, they've basically got their competitors beat as far as being able to launch satellites into space, assuming that the first stage is then uh, totally reusable. Of course, uh, we saw with the space shuttle engines that even though we brought them back, they required a lot of maintenance and uh, time and money in order to get them into working order again. Uh, part of that was because of the way they were put into the space shuttle. 
Okay, uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. I hate when this thing is down. Jeez. Okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, uh, they basically had to remove the entire back end of the space shuttle to get them out and serviceable. So that was a thing, and internally they were designed in a not so, not so easy to maintain way. Okay, uh, that is not the one, was it? I think it was, oh, hey, where did it go? I think it was this one. Well, let's just see, uh... Hmm. What, what? Why did it seem like... Okay, there's this other one. I don't know. Uh, I think... Once we uh, get this into orbit, I'll have to check with the tracking station to see which one we're actually going after. Okay, uh, so... Here we are, red-nosed rocket and should be good enough now right wait a minute oh that's this is this is the asteroids finally I get to see the bloody asteroid coming in okay so this asteroid is coming in whichever one it is this uh, wharf wharf 580 but it's not coming in anytime soon Okay, well, let, let, that, that makes things easy. Uh, how, uh, okay, that's not tr being tracked yet. Set as target. Does this one come in at all? No. So this must be the one that I was looking at. Because I remember the one I was looking at didn't come in at all. How about this one? Okay, this one makes this kind of... Oh, okay, so now everything makes sense. Uh, let's, let's see this one. Um, this one looks like it impacts. Okay, how long before that happens? 43 days before it escapes uh, doesn't really give uh, entry time though yeah I, I guess it can't be too far away from that 43 days right I think Anyway, uh, it looks like it's pretty far off right now. Well, this one looks like it's even further off and it's in 17 days. Hmm. But at least it's got periapsis. Ooh, this one doesn't. 52 days. Okay, enough of that. I think the one I was going for was... Because I know, know it was within Kerbin's orbit. And it wasn't hitting Kerbin. That was our irritation with it. So I think it's that one. Let's try and plot f to intercept that one. Let me just make sure that our orbit is oriented right. Okay. So we need to burn, let's say, from here for now. Try and get an intercept point with our target. So it's over there. Yeah, this, this looks like the right one. If I remember correctly, we have to tilt like this to get to it. Remember, remember that uh, once we get to the asteroid, we'll, we'll, we'll have quite a lot of uh, speed to burn off. There's no arrow braking, there's no, there's no way to burn off the speed except with sheer thrust so it looks like we've actually reversed okay let's try and fix our inclination okay <laughs> I'm trying to use the mouse wheel to do fine adjustments on this but it's it's tough sometimes Okay, I'm, I'm really doing just fractions of a meter per second here, and I don't think I can get it... I don't think I can get my burn this good, so... Let's, let's burn this first. So, 
We've got the uh, intersect point in 17 hours, so this is going to be our first thing, no matter what. Uh, I don't think there's going to be an asteroid coming in within 17 hours anyway, so... Uh, we're running out of electric charge. Do I still have the solar panels action group? Did I ever have the solar panels action grouped? Let me see. No, I didn't. Skip absolute time there. And try and settle this guy down. Oh, we can just time warp, I think. Okay, off we go. Hmm. Seems like in this direction we've actually already passed the... And we were continuing to pass the intended trajectory. So let me recalculate here. Let's see, how far are we away from target? Uh, 2,400 kilometers now? Let's add a maneuver to fix that. Okay, well, it looks like we've passed it. I want to keep it. I think uh, it allows you to select to keep it, but I'm just going to do it now. Okay, 312, uh, 20 kilometers roughly. That's still not good enough. Let's get another tweak in. Before we get into interplanetary space. Well, I certainly see why they added the scroll wheel thing. Okay, I've probably cut out a lot of maneuver node uh, ma manipulating because otherwise this would be a whole episode of watch as he manipulated his maneuver nodes. But um, I've gone it to 116.8 kilometers now. And I wouldn't uh, give too much credit to my ability to actually get that close, but let's try. Let's try and do this burn as, as well as possible. It's not giving me a green check mark, it's uh, indecisive about it. Okay. One sixteen point two. Okay. All right. I think we need to get into interplanetary space before I try and get any closer. I suppose we could try one from out here somewhere, but that that'll practically be the same as doing it from interplanetary space anyway. So, let us continue to our planned rendezvous. Hopefully. I do not know how bad this is right now. This could be this could be already very tricky. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot I don't know. Okay, so here we are. We don't have that much time left. We've only got three hours actually, and it of course changed my relative location to two nineteen now. But I expected that, yes I did. Uh So I can get to 115 it looks like, but I'm having trouble getting any closer than that right now. Let me just uh, set my velocity to target so that I know. So it looks like we're going to have to bleed off about 1500 meters per second once we get there. But... It's the whole getting there part that's a little bit tricky. Okay, um... Yeah, so this is our situation. 115.2 as advertised. Let's try some more of this. 
This is an iterative process, and uh, you know how much computers like iterative processes. Uh, so, I mean, it doesn't look like uh, changing inclination helps at all. Doesn't look like changing uh, velocity in the prograde direction helps at all. And radially makes things worse in that direction. I, I really don't see it. Of course, uh, my main intention was to intercept one once it get in, got into Kerbin space, but I guess that's not what we're doing here. What I'm going to do, I guess, is I guess this is as close as I can get it, and then I'm going to uh, adjust my relative velocity with the target and try and get myself into it. I don't know if this is close enough to do that. 115 kilometers is not close at all, really. But I don't see too much of a choice here. I should point out, of course, that I have not practiced this at all. This is the first time I'm trying this particular thing. So, so yeah, I don't even know if it works or not. I haven't had time to watch other people's videos either. Uh, I usually watch the Twitch people do their thing, but haven't really gotten down to that. So maybe there's some technique that I'm missing here. That looks pretty far off actually. Hmm. You can see the gap there. That's the 115 kilometers right there. Uh, so it, it's a little bit deceptive because that uh, well, but that's relative velocity. Yeah. So we cross the orbits, but that's not that's not reality. <laughs> hmm. We're a bit ahead of the target, you see. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to just uh, get rid of this uh, 1489.6 meters per second, and then I'll worry about the rest. But I need to make sure we do that. Well, this is why I didn't send a Kerbal out here. Can't say that we see our target yet. But uh, let's find the vector that we want. Basically, our target is somewhere out there. Okay. I think we'll try and uh, burn right now. Okay, it's too soon. This is an interesting thing. As we pass each intercept point, not uh, the closest point, it gives us a new one. And it's always a little bit further away. Very disconcerting. Okay, well that's that stage, and maybe that's a good time to rethink things a bit. So... So yeah, this is our situation. And I bet I can't even click on my orbit anymore. No, oh, it doesn't like me in my orbit. Let's, let's just do the thing where I... Uh, turn towards the target maybe does that help at all it's tough to say really 
with the way that this thing is adjusting. Well, I like the separation seems to be going down. That's certainly closer than I've seen it go before. So you can see I'm trying to bring my prograde vector in line with the target, which is the pink one. I'm hoping that that's actually a good thing to do. I mean, no guarantees, right? No, that's not a good thing to do. This thing seems to be a little bit off here. It's tough to say, though. Okay, well, I think it's it's actually easy to say at this point. Uh, let's let's wait until we hit this one, and there's also this one. So uh, let's wait until we hit this intercept, and then I'm going to burn more relative velocity. Sorry, it's all from this view, by the way. Obviously, this is the less of the interesting views, but. Maybe this will help you out in your asteroid endeavors, whether I succeed or fail at this. You will know what I did. Okay, I'm gonna start uh, setting 300 meters per second as, uh, as a limit. And now we're going to be 3.4 kilometers and that's that's very good I'm I'm getting happier now so yeah the, I got interrupted by a little phone call but uh, somehow my intercept point went way over there so let me try and hopefully get it back maybe maybe okay there we go Okay. See now. Probably lose it again. Sort of making it difficult on me here. something over there. I think at this range I should really be cutting power now. And I can jump to this view. Okay, there's our asteroid, sort of. And we can start going towards it again. Separation zero kilometers in three minutes. That sounds interesting. Uh, maybe we should get our claw out at this point. Arm. And control from here. Let's see. Okay, our mod propellant gives us plenty of control. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not willing to time warp right now. This is the first time I'm approaching an asteroid like this. So I'm just going to wait patiently. Ooh, uh, so this one has the target center of mass thing, so I want to do that. Or not. Okay, well, I don't like it that it uh, sort of graded out, but all right. Hmm. Oh, 
Okay, now I don't have the range. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, can we not target center mass? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I need to be able to see how far away it is. Let's just approach cautiously here. I assume targeting center of mass means that this target rectangle is its center of mass, so I'm gonna go with that assumption. Tough to say though. We're definitely going in too fast. Let's just ease it off here. Quite want to get right where I want it to be. Let me just quickly jump. Uh, what kind of class? Oh, I can't even see. Whatever. Okay, I can't uh, focus on that view now. I don't know. I don't remember which class it is. I think it's class C. So it's a mid range asteroid. But yeah, I don't like it that uh, targeting the center of mass seems to not give me the range anymore. But I guess... I don't know. Hmm. I hope that surface is as smooth as it looks. There's some way to tell that I'm actually aimed at the right spot. Okay, well, I need to slow down a little bit. I hope 0.1 meters per second is slow enough for this thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think we've got it. I don't know. I think we've got it. Alright. We have made contact, folks. We are now a 94 ton vessel. <laughs> okay. Um, that's interesting. Uh, actually, let's, let's do this thing. Let's calculate our delta V based on that. Calculator's out. Uh, there's two stages on this. There's this stage, which currently has that much fuel, and then there's also a mini stage, which has that much. So, this is how much fuel. This is 1.8 tons worth of fuel. And the ISP of this is 390. So, uh, 1.8 tons, and we well, wait, 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 what do we say for the whole thing? 94 tons. Wow. So, it's 94 divide by 92.2 take the natural logarithm of that multiply by the ISP and 9.81 and this stage has a delta V of 74 so not including the RCS we're talking about 115 meters per second worth of delta V Hmm. What can we do with 115? Could we possibly bring this asteroid into a uh, Kerbin encounter with 115? Is that possible? Tough to say. Uh, uh, well, I guess we can set our target as Kerbin. Set as target. Add a maneuver.
Oh, this is our closest approach right now. So we're not... Oh, look at that. Hey! Oh, the, that's 260. Wow. But that's pretty close. That's... We don't need to do it right here. Perhaps there's a more efficient way of doing it somewhere else. Uh, let's see, our our orbits with uh, Kerbin are pretty close. This thing will eventually smash into Kerbin, I'm sure. But... Actually, maybe we should wait for that, huh? Let's add a maneuver at our periapsis. And try and intercept Kerbin. Oh, there, there we go. Aha! Kerbin periapsis 6.9. Do we really want to bring it into the Kerbin system? But but uh, let, let's just uh, state the fact here. 33.4 meters per second. We could bring it in. Whether it's a good idea or not, we don't know that yet, and perhaps we should wait on uh, on making such plans. So for now, I'm satisfied. We've got we've got a little probe out stuck on an asteroid, and uh, it's reading the mass of the asteroid. So so yeah, this mission has been successful, and we can push this asteroid around. Not very much, but uh, it looks like we could smash it into Kerbin if we wanted to. Whether we could get into Kerbin orbit, though, that's that's a trickier business. That requires us to actually have it aero break around Kerbin, I think. If if we're just going to use a, a, po a probe like this. Because this probe isn't going to be able to just thrust it into Kerbin orbit itself. It'll need to aero break it. But, uh, yeah, this is a doable thing. And uh, I think I'll have to think about whether we want to do such a thing or not. Uh, we've got uh, four days before this maneuver anyway, so uh, I'll, I'll keep the maneuver. Yeah, because we can uh, keep maneuvers even if we change vessels. So I'm going to keep this maneuver and let's let's name this. Can we rename Asteroid? So oh, I haven't really thought up uh, Asteroid names. Hmm. Well, they, they normally name it after famous people. Um... Let's call this the Newton. I think that's a good name for an asteroid, right? So, uh, Newton. Yes. An asteroid named Newton. Sounds, sounds good. Alright, so we've got that plotted. And I think, I think this is a natural time to, to end this episode. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them... Oh, hold on. I'm curious about what functionality we have. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.